Hello, YTPC. Ethan, Parsimonious Piper here. Today, I've got James Burroughs for an interview. Before we get started, what are you smoking? I am smoking. I just opened the can of From Beyond, Cornell and Deal, and uh, seems pretty good so far. It's different, a little bit different. Yeah, the reviews have been kind of up and down on that, just like Scarecrow. Um, some people seem to, to really go for it and others are eh, I haven't tried it yet I tried scarecrow and that didn't do it for me it tastes to me it's kind of like uh, I just did a review of nightcap not long yeah. ago and it uses the same ingredients obviously a different balance uh maybe you know quite a bit more perique whereas in the nightcap you don't get a whole lot of the perique yeah so, yeah but, well in my little uh Aaron McCabe customized cob i've got uh some uh, peter stokeby ps41 cube cut burley one of my my favorite corn cob blends fantastic stuff so james tell us a little bit, bit about yourself where you live what you do that kind of uh, thing so i live in franklin ohio which is a little suburb just south of dayton and about 30 miles north of cincinnati all right. I, uh, for years, I was a plumber, actually. So I kind of missed the name on that. I should change the name to something with piping. Go figure. <laughs> and uh, now for the last six and a half years, I've been working in corrections. So. Okay. But that's interesting, too. I, uh, you know, being a union pipe fitter and stuff, there was, we had quite a bit of a slowdown here in Dayton. And I moved. I started travel. I had to start traveling for work and I traveled all over the U.S. for about seven years. Mm. And I finally decided, you know, once my little one was born, I have a 10 year old, he's my youngest, that that wasn't for me any longer. So I got out of that and did a few odds and end jobs. And then I ended up at the state prison. <laughs> On the outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get to, so, I get to visit and leave. <laughs> and you've been doing that for about 10 years now then? Uh, actually I've been doing that for going on seven years. Okay. So yeah, it, it, travel is tough with a family. I mean, it's tough it just on a marriage, but it's really, it's brutal on a family. It is. And, you know, I used to have a really good time doing it because I've, I've worked out in Seattle and Reno and, you know, lived up in Milwaukee for a while and basically any oil refineries or, uh, coal fire, uh, power plants that, needed work done you know they would call for people and we'd go out there and make really good money too i mean you know heck back in 2007 and 8 i was making like 40 bucks an hour back then mm. but you know the sacrifice you know i had to pay mm -hmm. for a hotel and always sending you know trying to support two households yeah yeah so that's tough seems like i'm i was no better off then than i am now and i make about half that <laughs> well you're better off now because you're all together Oh yeah. And that makes a difference. So yeah. what got you into pipe smoking? How long you've been smoking a pipe and, and what got you started? All right. So back when I, hell, back even when I was like 18 years old into the mall, I'd go into the mall and be in the, uh, you know, the mall always had, I forget what they were called. The old tinderbox stores. Yep. yep the tinderbox. I, I would go in there and buy, you know, cigars or whatnot and i finally ended up with a pipe didn't really know how to smoke it very much <laughs> but, I, but i tried i remember there was this older guy that i worked with that he always smoked a pipe and so i mean i kind of always tried to get tips and pointers from him to see you know what am i doing wrong you know why is my tongue hurt and he always just you know his answer was well you must be smoking too much <laughs> so you know, years later, about three years ago now, going on three years ago, I picked up the pipe again, and that's when I found mutton chop and matches and, right. you know, because I was wanting, you know, I really wanted to smoke the pipe, but the pipe bites back. <laughs> you know, you, you just get a, you know, a big hot ash, you know, and you don't know what you're doing wrong. Did you, did you happen to start out on aromatics? Of course. I mean, yeah. I mean, what's what's more appealing? You know, you you walk in and it, you know you want 
the candy flavored stuff. Right. That that nice vanilla or cherry yeah. flavor the smell that yeah, it yeah. smells wonderful, but boy, it sure bites if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and that's when I really learned to smoke a pipe. Um, after I was 18, my first son was born when I was 21. And my first wife, she actually, you know, we smoked cigarettes at the time and she wanted to quit and I wanted to be supportive, but you know, after a couple of days of no smoking. So I went back to the pipe and I started smoking half and half, which at that point it seemed pretty close to cigarette tobacco. Mm. And yeah. I smoked half and half for quite a while. I would just walk out on the patio and smoke it for a few minutes, just like I would a cigarette and then put it down. But uh, it got me, it worked at the time. And then it just seems like you lose the years and you decide, oh, well, whatever happened to that? So. Well, I, I recall a few, um, a few weeks ago or a couple of months ago, you had posted um, a video about helping you quit uh, cigars or cigarettes. Cigarettes, yeah, it's, it's the harder. You know, at, at the same time, I've been on a diet now for four and a half months. Right. And giving up the cigarettes is still harder than food. Mm. It, it seems to be harder to give up cigarettes than it does Twinkies. Wow. Yeah. I, I was never, I, I, my parents never really had to worry about me smoking cigarettes or, well, pot or anything else for that matter, because I can't inhale. If I yeah. accidentally inhale my pipe, I just, I think I'm about to die. Um, I just, I have never been able to, to inhale smoke. And uh, of course that, that got me laughed at in, in high school and college, but you know, I, <laughs> the, the benefit was I have no idea just how addictive cigarettes can be. It's, yeah. it's you, to me, it's been pretty bad because I was raised in a family of smokers. Mm. So even though, you know, I can kick the habit, there's still, you know, every couple of days I'll be like, you know, I'm just going to go out and have one. <laughs> Next yeah. thing you, know, you got four or five and then you're like, okay, I'm not doing this again. And, you know, and my wife smokes cigarettes, so it makes it even harder. I bet. But for health purposes, you know, I, I want to quit. I'm, I'm 43. And I figure now's the good time to give that up because I've, you know, I've smoked for 20 years, you know, all together. So. And I don't, have, have you seen, uh, do you know, Preacher Man Piper, Doc? Yeah. yeah. You know, he, he's talked about helping, you know, get people off of cigarettes and having their lungs clear up in, in pretty short time. Yeah, that's, that's my goal. Pretty amazing. But, yeah. you know, I, don't, I don't smoke near what I did, but it's still, you know, any is too much. So we, we talked briefly about getting into pipe smoking with uh, aromatics like so many of us uh, it, did. What are your favorite uh, blends or types now? Okay, so my favorite types are non-aromatics. And uh, I, like the, I like the vapors. I mostly is English blends for me. Mostly, mostly English blends. The, uh, my mixture 965, the nightcap, um, from beyond is, is so close to all of them. I, there, there are a few aromatics that I do like, and surprisingly one is lane one Q it's well, everybody seems to like that. I know I like that one too. And I'm not an aromatic guy. No, I mean, you know, it, it seems like sometimes lane one Q never disappoints. You never, you never have that be like, this just ain't, ain't good. You know, it's just perfect. Yeah, it's kind of like Carter Hall for me. It's just one of those, I, I could smoke a little bit of it every day and, and really not get tired of it. Yeah. I don't, but I probably could. Yeah, it's Lane One Q is great. Autumn Evening is really good. Um, you know, I want to like the cherry blends so much because I like the way they smell, but I just can't get over a, a, just, a, just a total fake flavor. Well, I, I, I'll tell you what I tell other people who would like to, to like cherries, but don't go to uh, Mylan Tobacconist's website and mm -hmm. check out their cherry bonbon. Um, that is actually a cherry that I like and my wife likes the room note of. So, but yeah, their, their cherry bonbon, it does not taste chemical. Um, it, it actually has pretty good flavor. You know? I mean, I even like the cult blood red moon, but I still get that. I mean, there's yeah. just, it's just, it's just tastes 
it always goes back to old Robitussin. <laughs> yeah, when, when it halfway through the bowl, you feel like you're smoking cough syrup. Yeah, and in even in vaping, I used to vape too, and the the cherry blends in the vape are the same way. Huh? It's it's just something about cherry. I don't know. Once you had Robitussin, you just can't <laughs> move on. Now, with your English blends, are you a a mild, medium, or lat bomb smoker, I, or or do you like them all? I'm lat bomb. The okay. More you know, pir pirate cake is like that's ambrosia to me yeah i mean there's there's lots of blends that i try and i'll be you know well this is good and you know i have i get just latakia at my local tobacconist and i'll add latakia to it if there's something that i don't love i'll add latakia to it just seems to make it better even aromatic <laughs> yeah and, I, I i bet that does make an aromatic taste better but I know as soon as my wife smells Latakia, she's gone. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it cools it down, too. It makes it burn mm -hmm. not so hot, you know. Even just a little bit makes a big difference. Even, you know, sometimes, you know, in, in a straight Virginia, I'll even throw just a, sometimes a touch in there. Yeah. Now, okay, so we've, we've briefly hit on blends. How about pipes? Do you have a, a particular maker or shape that you uh, like? It, well, okay, so shape. This is the first pipe I've had since I started smoking a couple of years ago. Again, I, I like either straight or just slightly bent. Yeah, it just makes it easier for the pipe cleaner to go in. I, it's, you know, the lip hangers. It seems like the smoke's going up in my eyes. <laughs> I, I like a straight or a slightly bent pipe. Uh, Savinelli seems to be what I end up going to and looking at more often. I'm definitely more of a tobacco guy than a pipe guy. I probably have, you know, 10 or 11 or 12 pipes, somewhere around there, I don't even know. Nothing that I would consider a collector's or anything like that. I got the Savinelli 320, the 673, you know, a, you know, a few little ones. And I got, I got a Peterson, uh, that's more of a curved it's the uh dr jekyll and mr hyde oh yeah but as far as peterson that's the only pipe i have from, that's a peterson i probably have more cobs than anything I just, yeah i think my only two petersons are both the 106 straight billiards how do you like it i love them they both smoke great um absolutely uh, fantastic but i yeah i shied away from peterson's bent pipes well, for one thing, I'm like you. I prefer either a straight or just a real gentle bend. Yeah. Um, and it's not so much for me passing a pipe cleaner. It's just that's the shape. I, I just prefer that. Um, yeah. But I had I had heard so many scare stories about Peterson bad drilling on bent pipes that I figured they couldn't screw up a billiard. Um, <laughs> and, I don't think I've had any pipe that was, I don't think I've ever had a pipe that was bad. I just have pipes that I like more than others. Yeah. Yeah. Th there was uh, for, oh, a year or two there, you know, there was, uh, there was a lot of scuttlebutt about Peterson having some, some real engineering problems with their bent pipes. I, I yeah. have not, I haven't experienced that with any brand yet. Yeah. You know, so with, you know, all the, all the new rules of tobacco and stuff that all the tax stuff, the rumors going around, I've actually been, hoarding tobacco now for the last six months yeah that's smart i just you know just the motto is is it'll never be cheaper than it is today that's right it, prices don't go down uh, so my magic number is about i don't know about i'm thinking about 60 pounds is what i really want and i'm trying to get a variety of all the stuff that i like even some yeah. cherry because I, I think the aromatics would be the first thing they take away too because the, you know they're really attacking the whole right. flavor. Well, they you know just like they did in Europe, where yeah. you can't you can't label anything with any with a any tobacco blend with a, a food name anymore. Yeah. Because you know? it's it's got to be after kids because adults don't like cherry or vanilla or anything like that. And kids and kids don't like pipes. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. 
yeah, it's, you know, it's nonsense. But I do think that if anybody's going to stock up, I think aromatics should be their first stop. Um, yeah, if, yeah, if you, um, if you have any that you like, go ahead and yeah, pile them up. Um, yeah, and that's what I've been trying to do. Yeah, I, I'm very fortunate in that I happen to love Burley's and I, I got a sample of just some straight uncased homegrown Burley uh, a year or so ago. And turns out I love it. So if worse came to worse, I could grow my own and uh, and not have to worry about blending it and and I would still enjoy it but yeah I like the Burleys too as far as an all-day smoke the uh I like the Prince Alberts and the Carter Halls and and I'm pretty stocked up on them actually so I'm kind of fortunate you know the Sir Walter Raleigh's I really enjoy them Mm -hmm. Uh, Codger blends are they're hard to beat there's a reason they've stuck around as long as they have they're they're effortless you you light it and the next thing you know it's all the way down you know you smoked it without having to even relight it's amazing yeah it, it really is they're yeah. phenomenal yeah. i know that that's usually true for me of these cube cuts but i'm talking too much and not paying attention to my pipe <laughs> having it go yeah. out on me um but well, yeah the codgers are fantastic Sometimes I like to smoke cigars when I do a video because it's a it's a relief that I'm not trying to keep the pipe lit. <laughs> so uh, what got you, um, what brought you into the YTPC? You mentioned uh, uh, mutton chop and, and matches. Were they the, were they your gateway? They were and just wanted to be a part of something, you know, of people who are like you and like the things that, you know, I think, I think it's the, great community i think of everyone like family and i started watching live streams and just commenting here and there and i thought you know what there ain't no difference in these people than me you know i mean i can sit down it i think it really started also the fact that my kids getting older and a lot of times i was just kind of sitting alone you know what i mean like in the same house but you know he's off doing his own thing and you know i didn't have i can't leave because i'm watching him so I might as well make a video and talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I and I really enjoy the YTPC. It's I can't imagine it. Just if it would go away, it would it would really upset me. Well, for me, having this connection, um, you know, especially over the last year and a half, uh, just has been wonderful. Uh, you know, who knows what they'll do in the future too? You know, they keep demonizing tobacco. I mean. Who knows what'll happen? If we'll even be, you know, will our videos be taken down because we're smoking a pipe in the video? Yeah, or if we'll have to find a an, another platform to to move to. Yeah, who knows? You're, yeah. you're right. Um, Can't take yeah. nothing for granted, really. Of course, if we were smoking pot, it would be okay. Well, of course, it would but, not only okay, but good for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It, we could go down that rabbit hole a very long time, I'm sure. But outside of pipes, what are some of your other hobbies? Really, uh, we we go to church on Sundays. Um, I work. I come home. It, it seems like it's nonstop between, you know, football just now ended with my son. Mm-hmm. Before that, I didn't really have a whole lot of time for hobbies. Uh, there was a time when I really was into video games. I think that was my, I'm 43. That was kind of my generation. Yeah. I, uh, I definitely like the world of Warcrafts and, and things like that, but you know, I'm perfectly content now with sitting down and reading a book or, you know, watching a YTPC video. It just seems like my hobby, you know, I kind of chase my, uh, my kids around, you know, I was going to say, when I asked the question, I forgot that you still have, you have pretty young ones around and uh, yeah. they, they often eat up hobby time. At, at his time, at his age, you know, I, I try to get into what he's into to stay relevant with him. So he don't realize what he's doing to me, you know, six months ago, it's Pokemon. And, you know, before that, it was, everything was football and now it's anime and (laughs) he's killing me because i pick up a new hobby every few months chasing him to try to be relevant 
just as soon, just as soon as I figure out what's going on, we're on to the next. <laughs> well, for my son, for a long time, it was Call of Duty. So he had oh, me, he had me playing that with him, um, either with him or against him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish we would switch back to that because I like that better. Yeah, those those were fun. I, I was never any good at, at most of the games, but the, the kids enjoyed beating up on dad. And the PC games that I like to play, like World of Warcraft and things like that, I man, I was really depriving myself of sleep. Mm. It seemed like I didn't really start playing until everyone started to go to bed. And next thing right. you know, I'm up until two or three o'clock every morning playing because it's just, you know, it's, you get wrapped up with friends playing that also. So oh, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't played that for about a year and a half. Actually, we moved here. We moved about a year, a little over a year ago. And I think that's the last time I played just because I never really got back into it. Mm. I don't like it. Just, it just seems like there's always something to consume your time. Yeah. Well, uh, well. I guess it's been about seven or eight years ago. I had gotten into a, a game called Racing Rivals, and uh, it, it was really a, a mathematical tuning game because the the skill at these drag races was not particularly, you know, high. But every car you had to figure out how to tune differently, and mm -hmm. you know, and and you know, there were guys who they spent so many hours and a ton of money figuring out how to how to tune each car just exactly right um you you really can go down a rabbit hole in terms of time oh yeah they can yeah you can heck i remember when i a couple just a couple of years ago i found a new game that was i was playing with some friends and i remember going on vacation and missing the game like I couldn't wait to get home because it was game time you know every night at nine o'clock I was like all right they're playing without me they're getting better than I am <laughs> I'm gonna be so far behind when I get home <laughs> now for me nine o'clock now is my th that's my wife's time to she she tells me yeah the, the evening is winding down and I can hear your pipe people calling so you know go watch your videos go do your live streams that kind of thing yeah um, but my kids are out of the house. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not looking forward to that day to be honest with you. I no, it goes quickly. You know, and we both, me and my wife, we both when we met, our boys were nine. Mm. Both we each had a boy, and they were nine. So now they're almost twenty two, and you know we've I've had kids and her too for twenty two years now. So I can't even imagine in, you know, eight or nine or 10 years when my youngest moves out, I don't even know what I'm going to do. We'll probably look at each other and wonder who's that. <laughs> I mean, I, I know things are going to change, you know, mm -hmm. they you know, do at some point and, you re-identify yourself of what yeah. you, you know, what you're going to do after the kids are gone, because everything, everything now is up until now has been what's the what's the kids got going on you know we i mean it takes your weekends everything yeah it does that so, it does so well yeah. we uh we probably ought to wrap up right. um, have you got any parting words for the ytpc i don't know not really just uh you know i love watching every one of you and uh i look forward every day to you know looking at my phone and seeing who's who's posted new stuff today and you know, I just get excited all the time when people post new videos and it means a lot to me. Yeah. And yeah. It's a fun community. You know, you know, the channel, if, if I never get another subscriber than what I got, that's all right. You know, as long as people enjoy it and just reaching out and talking, you know, to other people or, you know, or teaching someone new, you know, what you're doing wrong, you know, maybe more than just the answer of you're smoking too much. <laughs> well, I, for one, have enjoyed your uh, your new Pipe Smokers Journey uh, series, and I, I think it's been a couple of weeks since you put one out. Looking forward to your next one. It certainly. has. It has. And, and that's one of the things I'm, you know, I'm always thinking about what would someone, you know, all of a sudden it'd be like, ah, that'd be something that someone needs, you know, and I'm not the richest person either. So a lot of the times the videos I have in mind is, you know, what's cost effective. You know, when I did the first one and said, start, you know, 
don't go out and spend a hundred dollars on a, on your first pipe and that mm-hmm. you know go out and get yourself a variety of tobaccos and, and figure things out you know it's all about i'm i'm cheap <laughs> you know well it's in my name <laughs> yeah you know you have to be i mean my grocery cart now every week is 50 dollars more than it was three a months year ago. ago yeah yeah i mean it, it, it's amazing you know i mean of course i'm gonna oh speaking of that anybody who uh shops at pipes and cigars it's there's a code for 13 percent off that just came up for the next couple of days mm. so that's always that's always big yep it is saving money gotta yeah. love it so all right well i appreciate the uh the chance to be on your channel yeah this has been fun folks as always his link will be down below if you're not already sub to him give james a look i am positive that you will enjoy him and his content with that, like something you like. Enjoy your afternoon. Take care.